Every painter trained to implement safe lead paint and asbestos work practices has a duty to the community, client, employees and themselves to faithfully implement the requirements of Australian Standard AS 43612 entitled Guide to Lead Paint Management Part 2 Residential and Commercial Buildings and the additional requirements of local agencies with responsibilities for the environment, waste disposal, public health and workplace health and safety. Students should be aware of their responsibilities to maintain the integrity of what they do. When dealing with hazardous materials, the issues of legal liability for breaches of the standard are very serious. Taking shortcuts can render the contractor liable not only to fines under workplace health and safety and environmental legislation, but also to civil action for damages for negligence. Australian standards and their absolute adherence are essential to ensure the protection and safety of people living and working in residential and commercial buildings. The factor that should give the best clue to the potential for lead content in a building is its age. All buildings built before 1971 are high risk and buildings since 1971 may contain lead if they have industrial or marine grade coatings. Buildings constructed up to 1940s frequently contained lead in concentrations of 10 to 20% and are of serious concern. According to the Lead Group, approximately 25% of Australia's building stock was built before 1971 and should be considered high risk. The presence of lead in paint of itself presents no hazard. It is only when quantities of paint are inhaled or ingested, that is breathed or swallowed, that the lead presents a hazard. Existing paint is hazardous therefore when it is flaking, chalking or being sanded or blast cleaned. In summary, the hazard of lead content in paint is greatest in deteriorating paint when preparing painted surfaces for repaint. Deteriorating paint. When paint films break down with age, particles are released of varying size from dust to sizeable flakes. These particles can find their way into carpets, furnishings and other areas of the home. Greatest concerns arise when they reach foodstuffs or into drinking water. Chalking paint can rub off onto the skin and be swallowed, a particular problem with children and domestic animals. When the action of weather on external surfaces is considered, it will be appreciated that lead paint particles will wash onto the soil from which they can find their way into vegetation. Fruit, vegetables or herbs growing close to the building can therefore be affected. Preparing for repainting. It is a requirement of repainting that existing surfaces be sanded or scraped. This process releases particles that contaminate a wide area and affect many different people, such as the painting staff, the occupants of the house, neighbours, casual passers-by. In addition, preparation can accelerate the same process that occurs with deteriorating paint, releasing lead into the house furnishing, onto surfaces in the home, onto the surrounding ground, potentially reaching foodstuffs and drinking water. For the protection of the painter, the occupants of the home, the neighbours and the community, it is essential that thorough containment of lead paint waste is practiced. Where waste has already been released, as in soil contamination, the affected soil should be removed. Working on a building with lead is classed as high risk by the Workplace Health and Safety Regulations. Lead enters the human body when you breathe in lead dust or fumes in the air when they're inhaled, or eat or drink lead contaminated food or water. It is stored in bones and teeth. Some lead will be retained in the blood and in soft tissue. Small amounts can gradually build up in the body and cause health problems. Lead can cause serious long-term health problems. It can harm almost every part of the human body, the brain, 
kidney and reproductive organs of men, women and children. Lead can affect anybody but children under the age of four, pregnant women and their fetuses are most at risk. In pregnant women, the difficulty arises from lead migrating through the placenta and endangering the fetus. The poisonous effects of lead can damage the developing brain and nervous systems of unborn and young children much more easily than adults. Many children and adults with increased levels of lead in their bodies may show no symptoms, even though they are being affected. When symptoms do become obvious, usually at high levels of exposure, they include lethargy, pain in the abdomen and constipation, headache and irritability. Children show these symptoms at lower levels of exposure than adults. Often the dangers to children arises from the fact that lead residue, as dust, is sweet to the taste. Children frequently will touch surfaces and then suck their fingers. Lead contaminated soil, external to the building, should also be considered a danger. When children do touch dirt, fruit and vegetables grown in lead contaminated soil, it may lead to lead ingestion. Neither pregnant women nor children should remain in the building where lead-based paint removal is in progress and should not enter until all residue has been removed. Domestic pets, particularly those that lick their fur, are also susceptible to lead poisoning. The health effects on children include poor development of motor abilities and memory, reduced attention span, reduced spatial skills, anemia, poorer performance at school, colic, gastric problems and behavioural problems. The risk is very high for pregnant women and mental development. Exposure to lead can be harmful because the unborn baby is exposed to lead in the mother's blood leading to impaired learning. Complications from high levels of exposure include premature birth, low birth weight or even miscarriage or stillborn. Adults may suffer joint and muscle pain, cramps, anemia, nausea, gastric problems, sleep problems, concentration problems and headaches. Recent research also shows a link to increased occurrence of cataracts. Painters are at high risk.